favorite aspects of my job? Well, I do like procedures. I really like um, like fixing lacerations because you really feel like you've helped somebody, you've made something better. So I do like that part of it, you know, seeing someone who has a broken bone and you've diagnosed it and put them in a splint and made sure they get a referral to an orthopedic doctor or, you know, fixing a laceration or treating an infection. Um, you know, you really hope that you've helped people in the best way you can. Um, so I do like that part of my job, really being able to like fix something and hopefully make something better for somebody. Um, I love being able to collaborate with other, with other physicians and other PAs. There's so many different people you end up talking to throughout the course of a shift, whether it's uh, an orthopedic resident or a urologist or an OBGYN or a radiologist you call with questions or you have a patient to admit to them. So it's like really great when another practitioner who has years of experience really gets to impart some of their knowledge on you. Um, you know, it's a little intimidating at times and, you know, everyone hears horror stories about some physicians that aren't very nice, but there are so many providers who are so helpful and so collaborative. Um, so I really like it when I have those moments and the fact that I get to learn things almost every day I work, especially in the hospital. Um, you know, like I said, when another provider gets to impart some of their knowledge, you know, to you is really, really awesome. And because not everyone has a job like that, where they're like, oh, hey, I learned something new today. I learned, you know, what medication is good for this condition or so that's really cool. I really like that about my job. And that's still happening now after almost 13 years. So <laughs> a lot of different providers too, whether they're like newer physicians or newer nurses would really have also have that, um, that, that kind of piece of experience to impart to that, you know, even especially when you're new or even doing this for a few years, you're like, wow, there's there's just so much to learn and being like open to that. You know, you just don't know everything. You really have to be open minded and also just allowing yourself to kind of like give yourself some time to get that confidence and to not be discouraged. It's easier said than done, especially when you're in a high stakes field like healthcare, depending on like which type of um, healthcare setting you're in. So yeah, to so the people who are still right now in their clinicals, it can be really challenging and overwhelming, but you just have to like, you know, you have a bad shift or a bad day, you just have to get up and do it again the next day and try to, you know, the mistakes you've made, the things you've learned, just like take that with you. Okay, challenges. Well, it can be really hard um, dealing with patients. <laughs> There's a lot of challenges that come along with you know, just meeting a patient for the first time, um, you know, patients come in with a lot of preconceived notions about maybe the person taking care of them. Um, also coming to the emergency room, what they think will happen to them that day, whether they're intimidated or afraid, you know, maybe a family member or someone really talked them into coming in because they're, you know, afraid to come in and get help. Or, you know, they're coming in thinking like, oh, they're going to fix me today, you know, and what they have going on is maybe something chronic or something not really appropriate to like deal with in the emergency room. Um, so that can be hard to lots, lots of other, you know, um, patients maybe who have some mental health issues that really affect, really creates a barrier to like take care of them really well. Um, you know, there's a lot of people who don't take care of themselves really well. So it can be hard to help people who don't follow up, you know, they don't follow up for the appointments you set up or the specialists that came down to see them or don't take the medications you prescribed. Um, so that can be really difficult. Um, that can be frustrating at times. I'd have to say also to being in the emergency room, the pressure to see a lot of patients, you know, it's busy. Um, so you always kind of feel that pressure to keep moving, pick up another chart, get your patients seen, get patients dispositioned, whether they have to be admitted or discharged. So it can be pretty stressful at times. Some days are better than others, but uh, definitely like the volume of patients um, working in our urgent care, lots of COVID patients coming in. So kind of that stress just to keep seeing a lot of people, um, it can really wear on you, you know, as a provider, you know, a lot of people feel burned out. I know I felt burned out at times right now. I'm, it's not so bad, but you know, there's definitely times, you know, during flu season where it's just, you're seeing a ton of patients and it can really, really wear on you. So, and that's, you know, whether you're a PA or a nurse or a respiratory therapist, you know, in any field, um, you know, it can just really, the volume of patients you probably have to see and take care of can really be 
uh, difficult at times. Yeah, so my, I think my best piece of advice would be to get experience um, either volunteering um, or a job, doing anything with like direct hands-on patient care. Um, so not only will it look great when you go to apply, um, I think, you know, you'll have a lot to talk about in your interview. Um, when I was done with college, I was taking prereqs. I took two years to work and take prerequisites as I applied. And then I started PA school, you know, two years later. Um, and I worked as a tech in the emergency room at Mount Carmel West. And it really was the best decision. Not only did it give me a break from college, it gave me like some real work experience. Um, and I was really able to get in there and see a ton of stuff and meet PAs and meet nurse practitioners and physicians and really see what people, what all these roles do. Um, so I'd say, you know, getting experience either working in direct patient care, whatever it is, if it's in a nursing home or in the OR or being a scribe or a tech, um, I just think it really shows your, you know, you know, probably what the role entails um, as much as you can before actually doing it and just giving you really good work experience and patient care experience. Uh, and also meeting people that can then help you that you work alongside that can help you with uh, letters of recommendation and things like that. So shadowing is a great idea. Um, volunteering is a great idea, but getting that real like work experience, I think it really gives you like you have skin in the game, you know, working, you put your time in and um, really show that you're you know dedicated and you you know what the role entails, you know, like working alongside maybe the, the provider that you're really interested in having that position. Um, I just think it gives you a lot of things to talk about in your interview and shows that you're well-rounded. But yeah, you might realize there's something you're like, oh, I don't want to work on that type of floor or in this setting or, you know, with this specialty or like getting a job in the OR and they're like, surgery is not for me. You know, that's, that's equally as important realizing like, you know, this probably isn't what I want to do. And that's important to be able to talk about too. Like I've had this job and this job, and this really showed me that I really liked this type of setting, or, you know, I really liked seeing a nurse in this role. And, you know, so yeah, I think it just gives you a lot to talk about and like the firsthand experience, um, taking care of patients, whatever that may be. So I think um, being able to work well with others uh, being patient with coworkers, whether it's other physicians, nursing staff, um, you know, you want to be, you know, working in the emergency room or even in an office, you know, you want to be efficient and efficient with your time. Um, but I'd say, you know, being open-minded, uh, with patients you're taking care of, being patient with the patients you, you, you take care of, and also your coworkers, you know, being really open-minded to that collaborative, um, relationship you have with the physician you're working with. Uh, I think that's a really great place to start. Yeah, I think, you know, being confident, um, being confident in yourself, you know, being confident with patients, I think, um, you know, allows a patient to trust you, you know, because like I said, you know, working in the emergency room, or even if you're working in an office and you meet the patient for the first time, you know, when you think about it, you really have to like establish that rapport with somebody um, so, you know, I think being kind and considerate, um, you know, people are trusting you with a lot. You know, a lot of people are scared whether they're coming into the doctor's office or the emergency room. So, you know, really kind of keeping that in mind. You don't know what the person encountered before they came in to see you. Um, so always trying to kind of start off on the right foot with somebody. Um, it can be hard to do, especially when like you yourself as the provider, maybe you're having a, a bad day or it's been busy. Um, but then also, you know, being open-minded to other suggestions from your coworkers, you know, there's things that I've missed or things that I've done incorrectly. Um, and, you know, a physician maybe had to point out, that's kind of hard to take sometimes. Like when someone's like, Hey, you didn't really do this right. No one wants to get that, that negative feedback, but, um, really looking at that, acknowledging it, learning from it. I think that makes someone a really good PA also, you know, any other healthcare provider. Mm -hmm.